Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at five things you probably didn't know in web programming. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is tap to search. So you might know tap to search from YouTube or Google, but you can actually implement this yourself. So if I just open my web browser here, you can see that I have this page here. And if I paste this in and I press tap, you can see that I get the tap menu and I can then search. This then brings me on to vincentlab.local with a parameter queue, which equals test what you could have navigated to some kind of search engine or some kind of search on your website. Now the way this works is pretty simple. So you just link this search. So this is an XML file, which is called open search and you give it a title. I've just given it a title of test and that's pretty much all you have to do in your HTML. And then you have to have this XML file. By the way, I'll include all these files down below. And here there's a few things, the short name test, then you can add an image. So image when you're doing the tab to search, then the URL, and then you can do question mark Q. By the way, this can be whatever property you want. And then you can make search terms and you can then put these wherever you want within the URL. So you could, well, you would obviously make this your own service probably would be the same. So localhost, maybe this could be search or name instead of Q. And then you add the tags, pretty simple. So let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is another awesome one so you might notice that on some websites there's a whole color theme so the url bar and all that that changes color so that is what this property does so it's a meta tag called theme dash color and then you set the content to whatever color you want so let's take a look at that on my phone so on my phone here you can see that the top menu is colored and you can see the rest of the website looks sort of normal but you can see that this bar up here is colored green and this is actually from that property let's take a look at the next one so the next one we're going to be taking a look at is deep copy. You can do a copy of an object by reference and this is what you would do most of the times but there's a few problems with this because if you're doing it like this so yeah you will get a new object but if you change the value on this object it will change on this object and vice versa so that can be a bit problematic so sometimes you just want to make a complete copy and this is something called a deep copy and that means that you're doing a complete copy and not just by reference so you can do that by just first stringifying an object and then after that, passing it, that will lose the reference and that will deep copy the object. And when you change a property on this object, it won't change on this object and vice versa. So let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is Nginx headers to improve security on your backend. If you have an Nginx server that is hosting your backend services to improve the security on that, there's a few headers you can add to just automatically do that. So deny iframes, that will just make sure that your backend can't be run in an iframe and this will protect you from cross-site scripting attacks and this will make that content won't be sniffed and this down here is just saying that your backend API cannot access the camera or the microphone or MIDI payment and this just means that your API cannot be misused you don't have access to a bunch of things out of the box and you sort of close yourself down and you're only able to do a few specific things this will also improve your security score so let's take a look at that so if we take a look at here, you can see that my security score is improved by these parameters here. And you can see that it's not a great score to get, but you can actually see that these are improves your security score. So there you go. Now, the last thing we're going to be taking a look at is Cloudflare. Now, Cloudflare is essentially, if you don't know what Cloudflare is, it's sort of like firewall, like a caching system, like a monitoring system, like a DDoS protection system, also as SSL protection system. It's basically everything you want in one box and you put that in front of everything and then you have all of your backends behind that and all of your websites behind that. So what I want to talk about right now is SSL. So SSL is if you're seeing these locks up here and the connection is secure. So HTTPS and you can see it's valid and it is actually coming from Cloudflare. So this is completely free and it's very easy. It's just a one click. By the way, this also manages DNS. So if you have on your backend, you have set up some services with let's encrypt or other services and you have had to write manual updating services and play it around with that. And that can be quite tricky and quite complicated. You can actually just put this up and it will automatically take care of everything and it's completely free. I hope you learned something today and I hope there's a few of these that you have not heard about before and you will take a further look at. I will include some resources down below. So hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.